Here is the 2026 Nissan LEAF EV. This is the third generation of the LEAF, and at one point, this EV was the number one selling electric vehicle in the world until it was overtaken by the Tesla Model 3. Now, today we're going to do a quick walk around of this third generation vehicle. One of the more intriguing aspects of this vehicle is the fact that it has two charge ports. It has the 1772, this is the AC charge port, this is for charging at home, or maybe you have charging at your work. But on the other side, like every other automaker and it's selling an EV in the United States, Nissan has been transitioning over to Nax. SAE J3400, that means you'll be able to charge this at Tesla stations. In fact, Nissan says that this vehicle will be plug-in charge compatible with Tesla supercharging stations, which means is that when you pull up to a Tesla church supercharging station, you can just plug in your vehicle. You don't have to worry about pulling out the Tesla app, um, which is really nice uh, because, you know, essentially when you get gas, you don't have to pull out an app in order to get gas. The new Nissan LEAF is based on a 400 volt architecture, which means that DC fast charging peaks out at 150 kilowatts. The AC charging starts at 7.2 kilowatts. So charging at home, no problem. Charging on the go, a little bit slower than some other vehicles on the market, but more than adequate for most people in their daily driving experience. Here in the interior of the Nissan LEAF, you're seeing a lot of updates over the second generation of this vehicle. Uh, one of the more important ones is that they have their uh, updated uh, infotainment system, which is nice. And if you get the mid or higher trim levels, it comes with uh, Google built-in, which is essentially Google Maps that allows you to do uh, route planning via Google Maps. So, you know, if I need to go to say, uh, San Francisco, I'm here in LA right now, it'll tell me where I need to stop, how long I need to stop, what my state of charge will be when I stop, and what my state of charge will be when I get to my final destination. With the built Google built-in on the mid and higher trim levels, uh, it will precondition the battery as you get to a charging station so that you have optimal charging capabilities. But what is nice, there is actually a battery heater, so you can actually manually precondition your battery so when you get to a charging station you know maybe 10 15 20 miles out you can precondition the battery you can tell it to get ready for charging and that will mean that your charging session will be quicker now there are buttons in this vehicle in addition to the touch screens um, they have capacitive touch buttons for the climate controls but what's really nice is you have a knob for the volume control. You have a knob for the cam or a button for the camera. So when you're parking, you're always trying to see where you need to be within the parking lines or uh, parallel parking. There is a button very quickly. You can turn that on. The gear selector is a series of four buttons, just park, reverse, neutral, and drive. Um, you also have the EV mode right here, which is nice whenever they put modes behind the uh, touch screen it's always you, more likely than not to not even change the modes what's nice is the the drive mode is actually here as a button and of course they have their e-step they no longer have uh, one pedal driving on either the aria or the this generation uh, nissan leaf which is a bit disappointing for people who have been driving the nissan leaf for years it's sort of invented one one pedal driving that's no longer available uh, so that's sort of a more for some people for others who've never used it You probably won't notice uh, you have nice capacitive touch buttons here on the steering wheel uh, Which are really, you know relatively easy to get um, You get some pretty good uh, headroom. You do have this sunroof which uh, you can electric photoelectrically charge uh, Open it up close it be able to see the outside world not see the outside world uh, if you get the lower trim levels or the entry uh, level trim um, it just has a regular metal roof so if you're just interested in that you have that but mid trim and higher trims you do get this pretty impressive uh, uh, sort of sunroof overall I find the seats to be comfortable um, at six foot three there's you know there's enough headroom for me um, your average person is probably going to be fine with that um, you have lots of leg room in the front in the back it will be a little bit tight if you have tall people in front you know, um, you're gonna have to put someone shorter or children in the back. 
four doors. The design of this vehicle is actually a huge improvement to me personally over the former generation Leaf. It feels more modern, it feels more fun. Um, it has a drag coefficient of 0.26, so it's quite aerodynamic and you're gonna get up to over 300 miles, that is the EPA target, in this vehicle with the larger battery pack. I also had a chance to drive an early prototype of the Nissan LEAF in Japan earlier this year. During my very limited time behind the wheel at Nissan's Grand Drive test trike at the Opama facility in Yokosuka City, Japan, I found the vehicle to be an improvement over the two previous generations of LEAF vehicles. We'll have more information about the driving dynamics of the vehicle closer to its release in the United States. One of my favorite things about the brand new Nissan LEAF is its design. Nissan says it is, it is Katana inspired. I do prefer this design over the first and second generation Nissan LEAF. It's a bit of a crossover, it's a bit of a sedan, it's a bit of a hatchback, it's a bit of everything, but it still comes off as a very nice looking vehicle compared to those previous generations. Now, we don't have pricing information just yet, but we will get that closer to launch this fall. For more coverage of EV sustainability and battery technology, be sure to subscribe to SAE International.